<laughs> Welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about seven things hardware digital multi-track users should know. When it comes to recording music, along with its many related processes, what works well for some may be sheer frustration for others and block their motivation and productivity. One size does not fit all in this regard, and it's a strong reason why the hardware digital multi-track recorder never died and still thrives today. So, if you use a digital audio workstation or DAW exclusively to record your music, then this presentation may not make much sense to you based on your requirements, and it doesn't need to. What's important? is that whatever recording process and related tools help you to be the most productive and make the best music is the right one for you. So don't let anyone tell you any different because if they do, they are not helping you. So if you use a hardware digital multi-track recorder in your home studio, then you may already have a good idea of what that unit can do. However, Many digital multi-track recorders are capable of much more than some may think. I constantly get questions about the features and functionality of certain hardware digital multi-track recorders, along with complaints about how some of them don't work as expected. That's why I decided to do this presentation. With this, let's jump right in and analyze the seven things hardware digital multi-track users should know. The first is that MIDI synchronization is still possible. Even if your hardware digital multi-track recorder does not have MIDI implemented, you can still sync it to other MIDI devices and your hardware digital multi-track recorder will be the master. For details on exactly how to do this and how this works, Watch my video, Tascam DP24 DP32 SD Digital Porta Studio, Sync to MIDI, No Hardware Required, on this channel. Now, what's important to note is that the external hardware solution in that presentation will work for any digital multi-track recorder. Let's move on to number two, which is bounce to free up more tracks. It never ceases to amaze me how many hardware digital multi-track users act like this feature doesn't really exist. <laughs> you see, track bouncing allows you to collect the signals of multiple tracks and use them to perform new mono or stereo recordings. In this way, you can re virtually record more tracks than you have available. Now keep in mind that the original tracks cannot be separated again so you must plan this carefully just like the rest of your recording session. Bouncing tracks has had a negative vibe for many, but it really shouldn't. To manage limitations, bounce tracks. The whole point of mixing down tracks to begin with is to ultimately produce a stereo mix. Now in some instances, bouncing down tracks is required as part of that process. Examples of tracks to bounce include live drums, and backing vocals. Number three on the list is importing and exporting files. This feature allows hardware digital multi-track users to collaborate not only with digital audio workstation software application users, but also with other hardware digital multi-track users as well. You can also import samples and other sound files as long as they're compatible with your specific unit and use them in your productions as well as archive your music to a PC. Let's move on to number four, which is use a headphone amplifier to get more phone jacks. This is a big deal for podcasters and other groups that require similar features. Most commonly, headphone amplifiers allow you to add anywhere from one to as many as eight additional stereo channels for distribution and mixing. 
Economical choices include the Behringer HA8000 version 2 and the Mackie HM400. Number 5. Submix to get more inputs. Many folks complain about the lack of inputs on hardware digital multi-track recorders and in many cases there's just no need to. You see, a submix is an intermediate step between audio tracks and the mix tracks. Submixes are useful when you want to record a number of audio tracks in the same way. Use an external mixer to expand your inputs when recording things like drums or larger groups either live or in the studio. Once you get your submix levels right to where you need them, you can then output a stereo signal from the external mixer to the inputs on your hardware multi-track recorder, expanding your inputs. Let's move on to number six, which is using an external preamplifier to maintain or boost your signals. External preamps are used to boost signals from analog sensors, such as microphones or instrument pickups, to a line level, which is the standard operating level for professional recording gear. They provide voltage gain, for example, from 10 MV to 1 V, with no noticeable gain in current. Use external preamps to augment existing hardware digital multi-track recorder preamps when needed to keep your signal strong and consistent. For more information on using preamps, watch my presentation ART Studio V3 Voice Valve Preamplifier Why and How I Use It on this channel. Let's move on to number seven on the list, which is use a power conditioner and surge protector to protect your gear. Some people have complained of power supply failures on their hardware digital multi-track recorders. Now a question is, how often is this due to bad electricity? You see, bad electricity is common and it includes power surges and spikes which can wreak havoc on electrical equipment and shorten its lifespan. Professional power conditioners protect your studio electronics from damaging voltage spikes and provides clean, noise-free power for your gear. Now this increases the sound quality of your entire system. Some power conditioner brands also offer insurance on your gear if your power supplies fail while connected to their units. You see, it just makes no sense to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on gear and not protect it from bad electricity. Please keep in mind that electronic device manufacturers are not responsible for power supply failures due to bad electricity. In summary, hardware digital multi-track recorders can last for decades, far beyond the PC OS and device driver upgrades required by software digital audio workstation applications. When hardware digital multi-track users are aware of the many additional solutions available to them and go the extra mile to protect the gear, then the sky's the limit. <laughs> well, my friends, that's a wrap. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new videos coming out every seven to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this video and check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Spotify. While you're here, listen to some of the music, check out some of the other videos. Let us know what you think about that too. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you soon.